Hi there, in this video we're going to continue our study of techniques for computing limits. So this is part three of my video series for techniques of computing limits. So let's take a look at this one. Limit as x goes to two of this function, right? So now, hopefully you've watched the first and second videos. So now I'm going to go directly to the function and ask you for the domain, because as we may be noticing, right, the domain is what's prompting us to find the limit. So for this function, right, what is the domain? So notice that, well, for the top, the square root, so x plus 7 has to be greater than or equal to 0. We can't take the square root of a negative number. So that means x has to be greater or equal to negative 7. But then we also have a denominator. x minus 2 cannot be 0. Right? The denominator can't be 0, so that means x cannot be positive 2. And so notice that x equals 2 is what we're looking for in the limit. So we want to know what are the y values doing as we approach this value that is given as 0 in the denominator. Um, so our domain here, I will say then, is from negative 7 because of the radical all the way to 2, not including 2, and then union 2 to infinity. So there are two possibilities for limits to study, right? What is the limit as x approaches negative 7? But only from the right, because there's no nothing to the left. The domain doesn't allow me to come from the left. So what is the limit as x goes to negative 7 from the, from the right? Uh, but the one we're looking for here is what is the limit, right? What are the y values doing as x is approaching 2? because our x values get really, really, really close to 2, but just x cannot be equal to. So that means that our y values, what are they doing? So that's what this limit is asking. So let's, let's algebraically work it out. With limits, always, always the first thing is plug it in, right? Plug the value in. So I'm going to plug in x equals 2, which I already know based on the domain that I'm going to have trouble because I cannot have 2 um, in the domain. It's not part of the function, but if I do this, I'm going to have the square root of 2 plus 7 minus 3 over 2 minus 2. So there's my 0 in the denominator. And 2 plus 7 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So I have 3 minus 3, which is also 0. So I have the form 0 over 0. And if you have watched my previous two videos, what does this mean? 0 over 0 means do some algebra. <laughs> so what does do some, some algebra mean? And in this case, we have a radical. Before, in my previous videos, we had polynomials divided by polynomials, and so we were having to factor. Factor Factoring was our algebra. What is our algebra here? We have nothing to factor can't really get a common denominator. I don't have any other fractions other than this big fraction, but I have a radical. So the trick with radicals is we want to get rid of them. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate to get rid of that radical. So what is the conjugate of the square root of x plus 7 minus 3? It's going to be the square root of x plus 7 plus 3. All right, for the conjugate, you just switch that middle sign that's separating the two terms. So the square root of x plus 7 plus 3. And now we do our algebra. I am a stickler about notation, so I'm going to keep my limit. If my limit is not there, I'm just doing simplification of an expression. My limit is telling me that I am looking for the value, the y value, as x is approaching 2. So don't drop your limit. Um, so let's see. Square root of x plus 7 times square root of x plus 7 is x plus 7. The beauty of the conjugate is the middle terms cancel, so I'm just going to have minus 3 times a positive 3, which is minus 9, all over x minus 2 times that quantity. Don't worry about multiplying this in. Our goal is to get rid of that term that's given a 0 in the denominator. So simplify some more. So I have the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 7 minus 9 gives me x minus 2. And now things are starting to look good for us, right? Why do I say that? Why are things starting to look good for us? I have that x minus 2 in the numerator now, and I recognize it. That's my term in the denominator. So x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 
is 1. So those divide out. And I'm left with that function. The limit of x goes to 2 of 1. Write this divide out to give me 1. So 1 in the numerator over the square root of x plus 7 plus 3. So the term that was giving me the 0 is gone. So now let's plug in 2 and see what happens. If I still got 0 over 0, then that means that I there's more algebra that I need to do. Um, so plug in 2, and I'm left with, I guess I'm not taking the limit anymore. So once you plug it in, that means you are taking the limit. So I'm going to have, so plug in your 2 in for x. So I'm left with 1 over the square root of 2 plus 7 plus 3. So 1 over 6, right? The square root of um, 2 plus 7 is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. So this becomes 3 plus 3 which is usually 6, and so that means that my limit is 1, 6. So therefore, the limit as x goes to 2 of our original function, the square root of x plus 7 minus 3 over x minus 2, is 1, 6. Now, I am assuming you have watched the previous video. So what does this mean? What did we just find? So hopefully you're answering, <laughs> what did we find? So we found the limit, yes, that is true, but in terms of the graph of the function, what did we find? So we just found that there is a hole at the x value, 2, and the y value, 1, 6. So the function, let's go back to the domain, Right, the domain is from minus 7 to 2, union 2 to infinity. So at x equals 2, that means that there's a hole in the graph. And what does the graph look like? It's going to look like our simplified version. Right, once that term is canceled, we're left with this function. So I can graph that function, and it's gonna, my, fun, my original one is going to look like this. I know you can't see me, but I'm doing air, air quotations on the looks like. <laughs> it looks like this function, except that there is a hole at 2 and 1 sixth. So let me show you what the graph looks like. So here is the graph of our function. So notice that the domain starts at negative 7, and it goes all the way to infinity, except that there is a hole at 2, 1 sixth. So that's what the limit is helping us do is to find the y value near that x value that's missing from the domain. So notice that everything else is included, right? All those x's are included, is, but then we need to figure out what are the y values doing near that missing x value. So because then that y value is also missing, but what are they approaching? What are the rest of the y values approaching? So that's what the limit is asking us. So I'm hoping that by sharing the graphs and showing you the holes in the graph, it, 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 really helps you understand what the limit means, right? The limit is what are the y values approaching as x approaches something. All right, so let's try the other example. For the other one, I'm not going to show you the graph. We're just going to do the algebraic part of it. All right, so here's our next example. So I have my function. Um, and so this one, actually, if you look at the domain of this function, what's going on here? what's going on. So I know, so I have two denominators, so x can't be negative 1 and x can't be 3. So technically I could find the limit of as x goes to negative 1 and as x goes to 3. So those are two things that I that I could do in order to find this, this limit um, or to find y values for this function. This one is the limit as x goes to 3 of this. So we're trying to see, okay, there's a there's an x value missing, right? x can't be 3, but we want to know what are the y values doing near that missing x, y point. Um, so let's see. So let's plug in, always, always plug it in. And what we're going to see is that as you plug in 
um, 3, this becomes 3 plus 1, right? So you're going to have 2 over 3 plus 1, which is 4, minus 1 half over 3 minus 3. So you end up with 0 over 0. So 0 over 0 means to use some algebra. So I'm trying to go over the different types of algebra that you can do, right? As you probably caught on by watching the, this is now the third part. So factoring, uh, multiplying by the conjugate if you have a radical, and now uh, we have fractions. So the algebra that we're going to do is, what do you think? Yeah, we are going to get a common denominator. So um, what I'm going to do is get a common denominator on that numerator. Get a common denominator on the top. And so what is the common denominator? I'm focusing on just getting a common denominator on the top. So the common denominator needs to have a 2, and it needs to have an x plus 1. So that means we're going to multiply the top and bottom of this one by 2 over 2 to get that 2 in there, and top and bottom of this one by x plus 1. And so we're going to have the limit as x goes to 3. Remember, don't drop your limit. If you don't have a limit there, you're just simplifying an expression. You're not finding the, the y value. Um, so I'm going to have 4 over 2x plus 1 minus, and then here I have a minus and a quantity x plus 1. So I'm going to keep those parentheses, right? 1 times x plus 1 is x plus 1, but I'm going to keep those parentheses because I have a negative, right? I'm subtracting the whole thing. If you're good about distributing that negative as you go, uh, more power to you. Sometimes I tend to forget that negative, and then... Until things are not working out, I realize, oh, I forgot to distribute that negative. So I just do it at the, I just use parentheses. So here's my common denominator, and so now I'm going to distribute that negative. So I'm going to have 4 minus x minus 1. So this is looking pretty interesting. So I have my x minus 3 in the denominator. I'm not doing anything with that. I'm still working on getting a common denominator on the highlighted part, that top there. All right, so now I can simplify it. So 4 minus 1, on like like terms, right? 4 minus 1 is 3. So I have 3 minus x over 2x plus 1. Now this still looks a little intimidating for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 1 under that. So that it looks like I have a fraction divided by a fraction. And I know how to do fraction divided by a fraction, right? If I have a over b divided by c over d, what do you do? That becomes a over b times d over c. You do the reciprocal of the bottom. So I will put a 1 in there just so that it looks more like a fraction divided by a fraction. And so I can say the limit as x goes to 3 of 3 minus x over 2x plus 1 times the reciprocal of this. So how do you take the reciprocal? Okay, just reverse it. So it'll be times 1 over x minus 3. Uh, I chose a really interesting example. So notice that those, can I cancel those? No, right, they're not the same. 3 minus x is not the same as x minus 3. So be careful about that. Um, x minus 3 is not the same as 3 minus x. For example, right, let x be 5. x minus 3 is 5 minus 3, which will be 2, whereas 3 minus x will be negative 2. So they're not the same. They're off by a negative. So what we can do, though, is take a negative out from the numerator. So take the negative 1 out of here. So then the negative x becomes just x, and the positive 3 becomes minus 3. Now they're the same, and now I can do my division. Okay. Notice that if I kept trying to plug in 3 in all my simplification, I would have still gotten 0 or 0. So 
until that x minus 3 is gone from the denominator, that's when I can now try to plug in 3 again. So I'm left with the limit as x goes to 3 of negative 1, right? This equals 1 as they divide out over 2 times x plus 1. Now plug in 3. Now take the limit. Taking the limit means you plug in the value of 3. So I can now plug in 3 and get rid of the notation because I am plugging in the 3. I am taking the limit. And so I'm going to have negative 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1. So negative 1 eighth. So that is my limit. So that means that at the x value of our domain, right, our domain is, is that x can't be 3 x is not in the domain, so there's no y value for x equals 3. But now we know that even though there is no y value when x equals 3, as x approaches 3, the y values are getting close to negative 1 eighth. And so and now I can say, therefore, the limit as x goes to 3 of my function, I'm not going to write the whole thing for sake of time, is negative 1 eighth. But remember, our function is the um, this guy, that fraction. Okay, so I'm hoping that this helps you understand limits more in depth. And so the tricks or the algebra, when you get 0 over 0, that means do some algebra. So what are the three things you're either going to do? You're either going to factor, if you have polynomials, you're either going to multiply by the conjugate, if you have radicals, or if you have fractions, you're going to get common denominators. So those are the most common algebraic things that will come up in these types of problems.